vintage computing. Here is a grid systems grid case 1530386 uh, computer, portable computer. This here would have been the Ferrari of the computer world in the late 1980s. Grid systems, they made these ruggedized laptops, which really, the, they were the awesomest things that you could possibly get at that time period. Ruggedized, they're made out of magnesium alloy. They're cast magnesium. This is at a time when the majority of computers being made in electronics it was just all crappy, ABS, plastic, fantastic, terrible, terrible construction. Uh, these were designed, and they were just have a wonderful design. Anyways, I'm going to have to do a video on this unit at some point in in the future. I, I got to do a little bit of work on it, and some cosmetic things, and replace the battery, and maybe the hard disk, and a couple other things. But for the moment, I'd like to turn attention to well, the floppy drive that goes along with this system. Uh, this system doesn't have the built-in floppy drive. Some of them do on the side, but this one here, uh, it's it uses a, I guess it's a larger hard disk and there's not enough space for the floppy in there. So it has an external floppy and a cable to connect it. And I tried it out and uh, to no avail, it didn't work very well at all. Uh, yeah, I heard the motor whir up, but I didn't hear any sort of the sound of the uh, the stepper motor moving the head along. Um, so, well, let's um, take this apart and see if we can figure out what's the matter with it. It's probably just dead, but cross our fingers, all of them, and hopefully maybe we can get this thing here working. Anyways, let's turn it over and see how we can get into it. Got four screws there. They look like they are Phillips uh, number ones yeah it seems to work pretty well okay still not revealing its secrets i guess these nuts need to be taken out and that did it there's the back casement off this here seems to be sheet metal folded sheet metal as opposed to cast um alloy my guess is it's aluminum uh, it's not steel it's not magnetic so it's probably aluminum Unlike the magnesium shell. This thing. Okay, there's the top part. And here is the floppy. And onto the floppy is a back plane. And there's the motor for the uh, for the for the the head. And fortunately it, it's it's not a belt drive, it's a direct drive floppy which is good because the uh, belt drives they tend to dry out and they fall apart over time and we can see here a little magnet and a hall effect sensor that's going to uh, double check and make sure that it's operating at the right speed now this back plane board that would be a custom grid thing that just allows it to fit into the casement nice and neatly there we go uh, there is also a metal shield there we go now we can see inside and i was looking for that i was hoping that it was simply the power connector for this uh stepper head motor uh, but uh i was just hoping that maybe was disconnected but no it seems to be in there pretty good so what else can we see looking at this uh, Ooh. Well, that's interesting. I think we got the problem right there. What we can see here is the upper head uh, is disconnected from this head carrier. And that seems to be what the problem is. Anyways, let's take this apart and uh, see if we can fix it. We've got two screws there. A little spring that holds it down. That should come out pretty easily. Once again, just a Phillips P1. Let's remove that spring. And there's the problem. Let's once again bring this up close for a view. Now the head is on a some sort of a compliant spring frame. Uh, it'd be similar to the one on the lower head. Uh, but presumably from sticking the floppy in there, it's kind of bent it out of shape. So we're going to need to uh, straighten that out. 
and it looks like it's just glued into place so we should be able to straighten that out and glue it down and hopefully this will be as good as new. Now for straightening out wires and little bits of sheet metal I really highly recommend that you get yourself a, uh, a flat jawed pair of pliers no, uh, with, with no knurling. Don't try this just with some standard chain nose pliers with the well with the rough knurling. Get yourself a pair of these or they're fantastic for electronic leads and odd jobs and well, let's see if I can straighten this out and I'll do it off a of camera so I can get it closer to my eyeballs and I'll show you the results when we're done. And not quite as good as new but it's flattened enough that I should be able to glue this down. I'm going to do that with a little bit of Loctite super glue and uh, I'll bring you right back after I get that done. And here it is glued back into position. Hopefully this will work. Hopefully uh, there's a little bit of a well to help align that plate in. Hopefully I got it okay. Still seems to have a little bit of compliance. Uh, let's put it back together and see if that little fix worked. Okay, you gotta lift this spring up and this flips over and just fits under the spring like so. Okay, after a little bit of trial and error, I think I got that fit back in in uh, its correct orientation. We can now try it out with the floppy disk and see the mechanism in operation. Yeah, clamps that head down nicely. Well, let's just hope that it's aligned. Let's put it back together and, and test her out. And I just straighten out this uh, shield. It clicks in nicely. Slides in well. Back plane. Oh. Well, that didn't work. Turns out that proper alignment of this upper head really is critical. Under these two screws here, there is a fair amount of wiggle room in so far as positioning where the head goes. Presumably, in the factory, there would be some sort of an alignment jig that they would use for getting it just right and doing it pretty quickly. Unfortunately for me, it didn't work out like that. When I first uh, tried this out, uh, I got a floppy general read error, which was rather demoralizing. Um, after futzing around, I undid these screws, I tried repositioning the head, put them back down, and then I got sector zero not found. Well, that suggested to me that, yeah, it was an alignment issue, and I just have to keep trying to futzing around and just get the position of the head just right so that it would work. So I undid these, and I adjusted them by like a quarter of a millimeter. It's really tough. I was just like, just the tiniest little amount. And general read error, once again. It, it was really like, uh, it was like playing pin the tail on the fucking donkey. It was just impossible to actually get this down. But after, after like half an hour or so, I finally ended up getting it to actually read a directory. That was pretty cool. DIR, it worked, and uh, but it didn't work for copying a large file. It ended up failing. So once again, undid these and just tried to, to try a tenth of a millimeter of a nudge and general read failure. Ah. Anyways, back at it. After like another half an hour of futzing around, I managed to get it just right and I ain't touching it any further. I, I thought about undoing these and redoing um, for a video just in, for the sake of quality videography, but no way, no way. It works, it's done. So now I can finally access my old vintage floppies. See what's on this one. Ooh, important files. Gotta check out what's in here. Really nice to see my old files under the glory of a plasma display. Isn't that beautiful? Anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe. I'll eventually be back with a video on the computer and its whole. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.